What's up, Ordinary Car Guys, and welcome back to the channel. Working on the 2005 Ram 1500 today. Going to replace the water pump. So earlier, I was rotating the tires. Noticed there was a little drip under the uh, under the front of the engine. I didn't think nothing of it. Thought it was just condensation because it was early in the morning. Went to the store and got a little bit, like three quarters on the temperature gauge, overheating. So I looked under it and it was just spewing water. So I was able to make it back and put it, let it cool down and then put the pressure tester on it and do have a leak and it was coming from the water pump. So I'm going to replace it. Unfortunately, you know, don't, you don't really ever want to have to replace parts, but I mean, it's something that you have to do every now and then. So right now I'm going to just take it from where it's sitting, pull it out in the gravel, drain the, and I just have water in it right now because I just refilled it in, with water to get back from the store to the house. I'm going to drain the water out of it and then pull it in the barn because it's going to be dark in a few hours and uh, going to get this new one on it. So here we go. So now we have the truck in the barn. What we did while it was still outside while it was draining, we got this top radiator hose off of the water pump right here. So it just has the little hose clamp on it there. Um, dr did drain the radiator and then also took the bottom radiator hose off, which is this right here, that goes onto the bottom of the water pump and got the radiator completely drained. So the plan is to remove, well, we're gonna to have to take the fan off of the engine, get that off. Then we're gonna to try to just remove the fan shroud and the windshield washer and over coolant overflow tank. Uh, just to get those out of the way so we can access it and don't think if we can do that I don't think we'll have to actually pull the radiator out but just get these out of the way so we can access the front of the engine but that's the plan right now we're going to get to it uh, so to take the shroud off or to take this tank off we do have the bolts up top here and then to take the shroud off of the radiator there's a bolt right there and then another one right up here under on this underside. So we're gonna get at it. So the overflow tank here just has two bolts in it, one on the top there, one on the side. And then we have two wires that go to it. So just there's a push tab on this side of it. So we just use the push tab and then put a screwdriver under it so we could push the tab and then lift up with the screwdriver on both of them. And that came off. So now that we got that off, we can start working on getting the shroud off. All right guys, so I got the nut on the fan broken loose. And what I did to do that is I'm using a crescent wrench um, so I can adjust it to fit the nut. And then I also used the pipe on the end of the wrench to get leverage. And there it goes. Anyways, and then, so I took a pair of channel locks and came around on the right side here and grabbed around the uh, grabbed around the pulley right here on the water pump, and then just turned it until it hits up on the top of this right here. It hits up here and gets stuck right there, and so then you just hold it tight, use the pipe on the end of the crescent wrench to turn it, and then loosen it up. And then now I'll just be able to hold the, the uh, pulley on the water pump by hand 
to just finish loosening it up. So it's not too hard. It's probably not going to be on there too tight. Um, it doesn't need to be cranked down. So, I mean, when we put it back on, we're not going to crank it down super, super tight. Um, but that's how I got off. Not too hard. And then so I'll just finish pulling this fan out and then we'll get the shroud off, which it just has the two bolts on it, one under here, one over on this side, and then it just clips in on the bottom of the radiator. All right guys, so now we have the fan out and the shroud off, so now we can access the front of the engine really nicely. Radiators are gonna stay. It's actually a nice little hanging spot for a light. So now what we're gonna to have to do, we're gonna to have to take off this bracket right here, which ties everything together. We're gonna to have to take off the tensioner. And then this pulley right here also goes into the water pump. So you'll take that off as well and just transfer over to the new one. And then this bolt right here that this tube goes to will have to come out as well. That bolt on the tube can stay. So as we see, the bottom pulley goes right there. Tensioner goes there. That bolt has to come out of this tube. That one can stay. Then there's 11, I think we counted 11 bolts around it that will have to come off of it. And then we'll have these two hoses to take off. So really, everything's really easy to access. So yeah, these two, two hoses right here have to come off as well. But everything should be pretty easy to access. Um, it's just a matter of getting to it. Shouldn't be too big of a job. So we're going to get at it. Right, guys so do, we do have all the bolts out and we have them most of them actually laid up in the new one over there just so we know where it goes we do have a few bolts still just laying over there but we do have it all the bolts out of it and we did just kind of crack it loose so now we're going to completely pull it off and we'll take a look at it But there we have it out. Uh, we'll just have to switch over the few pulleys that we have, the thermostat and this um, end for the hose and get this right here sealed back up. There's some RTV on it. And then we'll be ready to put the new one in. So we now have the thermostat housing and thermostat installed on the new water pump. We have some fresh RTV on there and we have the new gasket on the water pump. Next thing we're going to do is need to clean the old gasket and junk off of the engine. And then we'll hit that with some brake clean to clean any other mess off of it that we can't get and get any kind of coolant and oil residue that's on there off of it. So once we get that done, then we'll be able to put the new water pump back on there and bolt it all down. We have most of our bolts laid out here and ready to go. So we're just going to clean it up and then we'll throw it back on. So we have the new water pump on, we have all of our hoses and everything put back together. We have all our pulleys on, everything's torqued down and tight. So now what we're gonna do before we get the fan and the shroud back on is we're gonna put the belt back on. And I'll just show you real quick 
how to put the belt on. So what we're going to do, um, and we'll do this if the fan is still on there and you have to replace the belt if it breaks or something, what you're going to want to do is you want to bend it in half like this because you'll set each loop over the over and around the fan. So since the fan's not on here, we don't have to do this, but I'm just showing you that um, just for reference. So you just set it over the fan. This loops over top of this. So we have it just like that. And now we'll be able to pull up the tensioner and loop this in around this guy right here. Anyway, so we got our uh, char right here, so I'm going to use both hands to get it right. Um, but once we get that on, then we'll be able to go to the, uh, put the fan back on first. Because, of course, you can see this isn't right. We'll get this right. And then we have to put the fan back on first because it sets inside the shroud. Then we'll be able to set the shroud in. Uh, bolt that down in the two spots up here and over there put our water back on hook it back or our coolant overflow and windshield washer fluid back on hook the switches back up and then we'll be good to go and then so what we'll have to do is just let it set overnight to let our rtv dry and then we'll be able to fill it back up with coolant and uh see if we fixed our problem all right, guys, and that's going to be it for this one. So we got everything back together. Got the belt, fan shroud, fan, everything back on and tight. So it really wasn't too hard to do, just a little tedious getting at it. And, um, I mean, the water pump itself, it doesn't cost too much. I got it online for about $85. And also, make sure, order stuff online and go pick it up in store. A lot of times they have... Uh, online only discounts. So this one was 20% off. It's originally $100. So I got it for 80 ish, 85, including tax. So make sure to use that. Take advantage of it. It's there for your use. You know, order online, go pick it up in store. But that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully this helped. Pretty quick job. Nothing too serious or too in depth. Just a little, uh, just get a little dirty. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Subscribe to the channel. Like it, share it. I'll see you.